In this video, we are gonna be talking about the highest paying doctor specialties because we all know that doctors make bank. But how much bank is the question? And we all know, even if we don't wanna become a medical doctor, we're all extremely curious about which specialties make the most. And it's surprisingly difficult to find the answer to this because most of the data out there is really bad. But after doing some research, I found the best resources for accurate information on physician compensation that are available out there. And that is exactly what we're gonna be going over in this video, which doctor specialties make the most. And if you're feeling uncertain about what college degree is the best for you, or you just wanna figure out how to get the most out of college with the least amount of effort and how to get your first entry level job right after graduating, then check my course out down below, College 101. That's gonna go over all of your college needs. And also, right before we begin, you know, I don't have a giant marketing department like a lot of these universities do and spend millions of dollars a year on marketing and PR. And so I rely on you to like the video, share it, and then if you haven't done it already, subscribe and ring the notification bell. That helps me out tremendously and it helps to get my word out there. You know, I'm just one man who gives you really good advice when pretty much everyone else tells you to do the opposite thing. And so I really appreciate it if you do that. Thank you so much. All right, so first one on the list, number five is going to be orthopedic joint surgery. Now, orthopedic joint surgery is going to come in at about $756 thousand dollars a year. That's according to MGMA data, which in my opinion is the most accurate when it comes to subspecialties. However, if you look at Medscape, which is more of just general orthopedic surgery, it says they make around 511,000. Now, orthopedic surgeons are going to specialize in the musculoskeletal system. That's going to be bones, ligaments, tendons, muscles, and joints. And orthopedic joint surgery is of course going to be a subspecialty of that where you focus on joints specifically. Now, in order to become an orthopedic joint surgeon, it is a very long road. So of course, you're going to start off an undergraduate. That's about four years or so. Then you have to get into med school, which is very difficult. And you got to do four years of med school. So already, even if you got in on your first time, that's eight years right off the bat. Then on top of that, you have to do a five-year residency. And you're going to start off just doing general orthopedic. And then as the residency goes on, you're going to get more and more specific if you want to go into joints. Now, when it comes to orthopedic joint surgery, pretty much everybody is going to be doing a fellowship as well. And the fellowship is going to be an extra year on top of that. So that is a total of 14 years at least from the time that you graduate high school to the time that you become an orthopedic surgeon. Next on the list is going to be number four, Mohs surgery. Now this is a precise surgical technique used to treat skin cancer. So you're basically combining the expertise of three different types of doctors. So you're gonna be kind of like a dermatologist, a surgeon, and an oncologist all in one. This is also known as Mohs micrographic surgery and it was named after its founder, Dr. Frederick Mohs. Now, most cases of this surgery are going to happen on the head and the neck. And of course, being a surgeon who is operating on somebody's head, you know, you definitely have to know what you're doing. So in some cases, you're gonna be doing really complicated uh, surgical techniques, almost like a plastic surgeon doing flaps and grafts. Now, in terms of the residency length in order to get into Mohs surgery, you're gonna do a dermatology residency, which is about three years, and then another one to two years in order to specialize in Mohs surgery. So that's about four to five years overall with the option to do a fellowship afterwards. Now, as a Mohs surgeon, you're gonna make around $784,000 a year. Year. And on top of that, Mohs surgery and really just dermatology in general is well known for having a good work-life balance. This is, of course, extremely rare when it comes to uh, becoming a physician. Usually physicians don't have good work-life balances. So this can be a great one for the right person, the right personality. Now, Medscape didn't have any exact data on Mohs surgery because it's just too much of a subspecialty for them to keep that data. They basically just bunch it all together into these groups. But plastic surgeons on Medscape make around 526,000 a year and dermatologists make around 394,000. Next on the list is going to be cardiovascular surgery and they make around $795,000 a year. Now cardiovascular surgeons are going to operate on your heart as well as your blood vessels throughout your body. Now I was lucky enough to be able to see several open heart surgeries and watch cardiovascular surgeons do their thing and it's truly amazing. I saw a quadruple bypass surgery where they take the vein 
uh, out of the uh, the knee area and then they put it onto the heart and I just watched the whole process. It was several hours and it was just awesome. Now the money here is fantastic, but unfortunately there are some downsides to this one. First of all, the work-life balance isn't great. A lot of the time you are going to be basically doing emergency surgeries. So you're gonna be on call all the time. You're gonna be working very long hours. And on top of that, the residency training is usually six to eight years. And because of how competitive it is, it's usually more on the seven to eight year range. You know, becoming a heart surgeon is not very easy. It takes a long time to master. Now, again, Medscape data did not have this subspecialty. Uh, they showed cardiologists making around 459,000 a year and general surgeons making around 373,000. Next on the list is going to be a spinal orthopedic surgeon. So before we talked about the orthopedic joint surgeons, now we're gonna be talking about an even higher paid type of surgeon, which is the spinal orthopedic surgeons. And they make $835,000 a year. Now the residency here is usually gonna be around five to six years, so relatively long, but not as bad as cardiovascular surgeon. And really just any type of orthopedic surgeon is is gonna make quite a bit of money, but if you wanna make even more, then you want to specialize. And you can even specialize further than this. Like there's one doctor I heard about who is a specialist in shoulder uh, orthopedic joint surgery, and he would only treat athletes. So people who had issues with their shoulder, and like let's say you're a pitcher for a baseball team, you would only treat athletes who have that specific problem. And this guy made around 15 to $20 million a year. Right, so there is big money to be made in orthopedic surgery, especially if you look at the top, top level. But number one on the list is probably no surprise, you actually do have to be a brain surgeon to do this job, and that is neurosurgery. And they make around 875 thousand dollars a year and this is going to be surgery performed on the nervous system specifically the brain and the spinal cord so in order to become a neurosurgeon it's going to be five to seven years of residency probably more on the seven year side plus a fellowship in many cases this is a very difficult and demanding job you're going to be seeing tons of patients and doing lots of surgeries as well this one definitely does not have the best work-life balance but you have the best opportunity to make the most money. Cerebrovascular surgery is almost like a sub, 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 sub specialty of uh, neurosurgery. And you can easily clear over $1 million a year if you just focus on doing cerebrovascular surgeries. Now, of course, as with all of these different surgeons, a lot of the time it's going to be advantageous for you to have your own business, you have your own private practice. Fortunately, there is really good demand in this field. You're never gonna be out of the job if you're a neurosurgeon. In fact, you're probably going to be constantly bothered to do more surgeries when you're just trying to get some sleep. And as with a lot of different specialties, you'll likely make bank if you go to more under desirable areas. This is another one where I've had the pleasure of seeing spinal surgeries. A lot of the time these surgeries will take a very long time. We're talking like, you know, 12 hours plus. So if you're somebody who wants to specialize in cerebrovascular surgery, work a lot, own your own practice and move out in the middle of nowhere, it's gonna be hard for you to not make millions of dollars a year doing this. Now, if you haven't done it already, go ahead, check out my other videos right here. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video.